So um, for those of you that don't know, um, the Science and Conservation Center, um, what are we? Who are we? So um, we are at, on the grounds of Zoo Montana in Billings, Montana, and we produce and supply um, the PZP immunocontraception and train in its use of the contraception. And um, here is our building. We are 501c3. We um, have a six member board and there's three staff members and we're all pretty busy. Um, Kayla did her talk. She's in charge of her training and is also, um, when she's not training, is helping in the making of the PZP. So she's making the PZP training in the use of the PZP and administering the PZP. So she's pretty busy. Um, and then we have Liz who took over from Robin Lida. Robin um, was the first one who was making the PZP at the Conservation Center and she has retired. And um, Liz McShane, I'm, s I'm not sure, there's a few of you that have met her and she's now making it. Um, anyway, so this little addition of our building um, is now our training annex. So in our training, um, we do about 12 plus classes a year and a minimum of four people. Um, we train up to eight people. Kayla actually after this is going to be doing a training in Bloomfield, New Mexico with the Forest Service. Um, and Celeste is going to give her a hand with that. Um, we talk about the history of the PZP. I mean there is a long history as many of you probably know, um, the first horse was darted in 1990, excuse me, 1988 on Assateague Island. So PZP has been um, in use in horses for a very long time. So we talk a lot about history and the biology and some basic immunology. Um, we talk about ant adjuvants, um, safely handling it, um, regulatory compliance, on and on. Um, it's a three-day course, so if anyone is interested in taking a training course with a PZP, please um, either speak to Kayla or myself. So um, PZP is an immunocontraception, and um, it works with the immune system. And how does it work? Well, we, wor we um, use porcine zona pellucida, so that's pig's eggs. So we remove the zona pellucida, which is the sperm receptor, from the pig's ovum. So we have the pig protein. We inject it into the horse. The horse produces antibodies against the pig protein because it's not self. It doesn't belong there. So um, the antibodies attached to the pig protein. It's so closely related to the horse's own zona pellucida that its own antibodies then attach to its own zona pellucida and it just um, blocks fertilization. So it just gets right down to the business. It just, everything happens that's supposed to happen. The horse just does not become pregnant. So we have a horse, get started. The antibodies um, attach to the zona pellucida on its own egg and it blocks fertilization. So um, we get asked a lot, you know, what's the best, what, you know, what is the protocol? So the best gold standard protocol is uh, a two dose is two doses given at the beginning of the breeding season or right before the breeding season. You give the first dose with a modified Freund's adjuvant um, no sooner than two weeks. Um, what D Dan Baker was saying, you need those memory cells to get doing what they need to be doing. And then you give the second dose and then that animal is, should be con, um, contracepted for the rest of the breeding season. Again, we're dealing with the immune system. We're dealing with, um, we're pretty much at the mercy of each individual animal's own immune system. So we'll have some horses that it'll last for the whole season. Some of it, they come into fertility a little bit longer or a little bit shorter period of time. I can give you many, many different scenarios. Um, so the second dose, um, vaccine, so I'm sorry, I lost track here. So you give the primer dose um, any time of year, actually, and just give the booster dose right before the breeding season. You can do that. Um, and you get 95% efficacy. But if you give the initial dose 
one dose at the beginning of the breeding season, you can get 75 to 80% efficacy. So again, timing is critical. So you can give the boost or the primer dose any time of year and the booster dose right before the breeding season and you're gonna get efficacy for that um, season or just give the primer dose right at the beginning and you get 75 per or 80% efficacy. So yes, it takes two initial doses to achieve the best efficacy, which is 95%. A single dose can be given right before the breeding season to achieve at least 75%. An annual booster is recommended for the best efficacy after three years, it takes 3.3 years for reversal. So um, from a group of horses, um, it takes one year to reverse or up to eight years to reverse. That's where we get 3.3. And then after five years, the chance of reversal is pretty slim. So the more often oh, an animal is boosted, the longer the titers are. Um, at contraception level. So this is all great news, but seriously, who's going to do this work? So what we advocate for is getting some help from volunteers. Um, get a local and passionate group um, that has a strong interest in the wild horses. A lot of the, especially the smaller horse herds that are close to communities, you can get um, there's people out there taking pictures, um, and they really do know those horses. Um, but they can get trained in using the immunocontraception. So if they're going to take pictures, have them carry around a dart gun too. So they work hand in hand with the government agency under a carefully crafted management plan. Um, the NGO volunteers, um, they volunteer their time and their energy. Some volunteer groups have o even paid for their own darting equipment and for the PZP itself. Um, the agency facilitates the work of the, NGA, of the NGO to the extent that it can. We have NGOs out there doing, you know, taking down old fences. Some have um, worked with getting um, springs put um, on the rangeland for the horses and cows, deer, whatever. So we have all the stakeholders involved. You have photographers, you have hunters, we have ranchers that have been trained in the use of PZP to help out the BLM, community members, advocates who have been trained. Um, this also lessens, lessens the adversarial relationship. So if they're working together, they're a lot less likely to sue, I guess, for whatever reason. Um, and the volunteers also help reduce the taxpayer cost. You're utilizing volunteers, you don't have to pay them. So I'm going to introduce you to some of the volunteer groups that are working um, with BLM, the Forest Service, and then um, states. So we have Wildlife, Wild Love Preserve in Chalice, Idaho. Um, she started darting in 2012. Um, the HMA that in Chalice is 220 to 225 horses. Um, the AML is a little bit smaller. There's four volunteer darters, six BLM darters, and um, 90 mares have been darted on that, that HMA. The Pine Nut Wild Horse Advocates um, of Fish Springs, and then there's another group now, the Fish Springs, Fish Spring Advocates, I hope I said that right. Um, they were faced with a lawsuit when they started darting in 2014, and they had to quit for a few years. So of course the horses bred, and all of a sudden there's a lot more horses, but they have nine darters. Um, 47 mares I've been, uh, have been darted, um, and they work with the uh, Carson City field office. Oh, and there was also another little quick, I asked for little factoids, and in 2017, they lost 19 of 21 foals. So I believe that was like a mountain lion. So mountain lions um, can take care of a population um, by taking care of their foal crop. That happened in the priors too, several years ago. Um, Friends of Mustangs, they lost a lot of their really good darters um, just due uh, to 
age. <laughs> Sometimes we just can't walk around like we used to. Um, some of their really good darters moved um, out of the area, and so a lot of their horses were not getting darted like they um, like they were previously. So some of the horses have to be removed. And I, when I talked the last um, time, I talked to someone from F Friends and Mustangs. There was 27 horses removed by bait trapping, and they were really instrumental. The volunteer group promoted the adoption. And as far as I know, all those 27 horses that have been removed so far have been adopted. So if you if horses have to be removed, working with a volunteer group, the volunteer group can be really instrumental in getting those horses adopted. And I know Friends of a Legacy did the same when um, there were horses removed off of there. Um, they do not have to remove any horses. Um, they are a little bit above AML. They have four darters and there's four BLM darters. Wild Horses of America um, is working with the Salt Lake City office with the Anaki Mountains. Um, I'm sure they probably will have to have a gather, um, but they have more volunteers now to help them dart um, and get those numbers below. And I do have a little video here. Let's see if I can get it to go. Just a little boop. And those are always fun. They don't get too excited after being darted. Usually they just go right back to um, grazing, just take a few steps. And the darts that, that we use, they're one cc, and they, as quickly as they go in, they come out again. Um, so the Level Mustang Center, um, Wild in the Priors, and the Cloud Foundation um, works with the BLM darters in helping them um, identify the horses and also the location of the particular band. The Sandwash Advocacy Team and GEMS um, work with the Little Snake Office. Six starters, um, they have a very high um, amount of horses also. The AML is 362. And um, when I made this slide, I called and they had 181 horses darted. And the last I heard um, after I made the slide, they have over 200 horses. So this year, they are hitting it hard. Um, Placidas Wild is helping the San Felipe um, Pueblo dart horses um, close to Placidas Town. There's one volunteer darter, and I believe there's one or two um, from the um, Pueblo um, darting the horses. They've got 100 of those horses darted. Um, they have 100 horses, but they come and go, um, immigrate and immigrate from the area where they're being darted. So they have 72 horses darted that's time. We have the Sky Mountain Wild Horse Sanctuary um, working with the Hickoria, the Juarita Mesa. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. There's two volunteer darters and we have forest service darters and we should have more darters after this month when, once Kayla goes and um, assists with the training or does the training. You don't assist. Um, the Colorado chapter of National Mustang Association in Spring Creek Basin. And then we have the American Wild Horse Campaign. Um, they were, they're no longer working with um, the state Department of Agriculture in Nevada. There were some political issues probably between um, the American Wild Horse Campaign, another advocacy, advocacy, bad, I can't even say it now, advocacy group, and the state. So that just kind of, fell to pieces. So hopefully they can get that going again. Um, so we have another other nonprofit organizations not necessarily doing the darting, um, but that are just um, working with either government agencies or countries. Um, Cape Lookout, they have the foundation of the Shackleford Horses. They have federal legislation to work with the National Park Service. Don't let that happen. Um, the uh, Corolla Wild Horse Fund is a nonprofit group that works with five government ent entities. Um, Roanoke Valley, I do want to make a mention of they are a sanctuary, but they contracept their horses so that when they get adopted out, the likelihood of them getting pregnant is not going to happen. She goes out every year and is going to 
hand inject those horses that are adopted so that they will not have offspring. She does that for five years and has the adopter sign a contract. Um, I don't want to go over my time. So other horse projects, probably everybody here knows about Assateague Island. It's been going on since 88. We're doing um, horses on the Crow Agency. We've had them come in and do some training to different families. Um, let's see, Hortabage, they're doing pea horses, um, Chowalski's wild horses, and they just started as they opened up the preserve for the horses and just started contracepting them right away. Um, Let's see, the Louisiana State University, that was going to be an awesome project where they did PZP and Gonacon, and um, the government just wanted those horses gone. So I think a lot of those horses were rounded up and are no longer there. That, that would have been a really good study, I think. Um, Rachel Carson and Salt River Pima Maricopa, um, he's doing horses, and now the Salt River Management Group um, is also trained to to give the PZP immunocontraception for the horses that are not really um, managed by anybody. I think it's Department of um, Agriculture, Arizona. So we also do lots of other animals in zoos. Um, we're doing a preserve near Malta, Montana with their bison, deer, and of course African elephants in South Africa. And Thank you.